Hello and welcome to Red Stubler channel. In this video, we are going to talk about 7 CSS best practices that we should follow for writing a clean and easily manageable code and also speed up the development progress in the long run. Let's check it out. Number 1. Using CSS instead of utilizing heading tag. While it's not wrong with using span with CSS class to create a heading, using the actual heading tags provide you lots of benefits. First, you will have the standard structure and style across your page without having to assign the class to each div or span. This will also reduce the size of your code a little bit. Using heading tag also benefits the SEO and improve your page ranking as the web crawler are now able to understand the structure of your content. For example, the h1 tag is the main title of that page and will be considered the most important. So most people recommended putting the keyword in h1 tag. Number 2. Compressing the CSS before deployment there are lots of line breaks and white spaces in the CSS file, so using CSS compressor or minify tools to remove them is an efficient way to reduce the CSS file size. This will also reduce the page loading time, especially if you have lots of large CSS files. Some compressor tools are also go as far as removing the invalid CSS properties for you or removing the last semicolon and unnecessary backslashes. So if you are working on a small project, there are tons of online CSS compressor tools available, but you might want to consider setting up a compressor in your build step such as CSS Nano if you are working on a large one. Number 3. Avoid using important rules Personally, I think using important rules to override the style is the same as using go-to statement in programming languages. It's hard to debug and difficult to maintain. But don't worry, if you really have to use it, just use it. However, you might want to consider the alternative by using higher specificity. For example, using ID selector instead of class. Number 4. Use shorthand property when possible. Using them can reduce the line of code and ultimately the size of your CSS file. And additionally, when using longhand form, most people tend to specify only the property they need and left out the rest. Using shorthand form instead, make sure that all the properties are set to the desired value. But anyway, the longhand form is still needed when you want to override a single property and also provide more human readability as well. Number five, don't overuse a class. For example, if you want to change the color of every link inside the content div, you don't want to create a new class and assign it to every link. It's not wrong, but the better solution should be like this instead. Number 6. Always checking browser support when using any sophisticated CSS properties. For example, if you apply CSS filter effects such as blur or grayscale, you should know that they are not supported by IE and also have some outstanding issue with age. So it's a good idea to check your CSS property on canyuse.com and see if you need to provide a fallback solution for any browsers to make sure that all users are having the same experience. Number 7. Avoid using too specific CSS selector. Or in other words, don't use higher specificity than necessary. For example, if all of your elements are inside wrapper and content div, you can compress these rules below like this. Over specifying CSS not only just increase the size of the file, but also increase the difficulty to maintain the code. So 
So that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and please like or subscribe if you want to stay updated with us for more video like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.